Hey, it's Matt O'Leary, and this is New Music Monthly, where I cover my most anticipated and favorite new released albums of the past month or so. And I've got seven shiny new albums for you. Some of these came out earlier in the year, and I just really wanted to talk about them in some way in some video because I've been excited about them. So yeah, let's do it. I've got a review coming up for King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizards. I don't know, 600th album. But in the meantime, Ambrose Kenny Smith from King Gizzard somehow had time for this collaborative album called Three Times, like the Roman numeral three, uh, with a member of the band Tame Impala and Pond. It's Jay Watson. So Ambrose, Watson coming together, really a match made in heaven for me. Under his solo moniker, Gum, Jay Watson put out his best album, in my opinion, last year called Saturnia. One that really saw him just coming into his own as a songwriter with a lot of folk sounds brought to the table to go along with his usual bubbly, psychedelic synth pop sound. Ambrose Kenny Smith is, of course, the bluesy guy in King Gizzard. Like, he's always very prominent on their bluesier tracks. The screaming harmonica, yeah, that's him. Three Times is pure fun. It brings together Jay's just impeccable production chops, his songwriting chops, with Ambrose's instantly recognizable voice. Power Trippin' is a huge highlight for me. It's almost like a, a Beck-style production, this kind of mid-tempo funk sound with a chorus that just slap me in the face. I also love the last track, The Gloater, which is the only one to feature Jay Watson's voice. Uh, solo leading the song, and he's got a very soft, very understated voice. It's a great foil to Ambrose's voice, which kicks in strong on the chorus. The two have a very nice contrast between their voices, and like I said, Jay Watson, he's been coming into his own as a songwriter. I think he writes great vocal melodies, and I wish there was even more of that on this record. Still, just a super fun Excellent psych pop record. I love this Aussie crossover thing. I think it's been a long time coming. Would love to see Stu McKenzie and Kevin Parker get in the studio eventually. This next one is certainly going to end up pretty high on my end of year list. It's a new artist to me. Her name's Joanna Wong with Hotel La Rut. I was extremely intrigued by this album for a couple reasons. One, I've been to Taiwan, not really familiar with music coming out of Taiwan. And two, this thing is 23 tracks and just 51 minutes total. That is a style of album that I can really get behind. I love the hyperactive, quick songs. You know, I think the runtime of these tracks is on average like just over two minutes. This is an album of sketches, of skits, of vignettes. You know, I think this short story format of an album doesn't get enough credit, especially like in the capital P Prague community. You know, I'm wearing the Rush shirt today, so I uh, got to talk about Prague. And is Joanna Wong Prague? No, but absolutely 100% yes. Aesthetically, it's very twee, it's very quirky. It kind of sounds like the music Regina Spector would have made if she would have had a more adventurous career trajectory. Joanna's voice can be that soft, it can be that sweet, and also very witty and articulate like Regina. And um, it also just reminds me of her musicality and kind of old timiness. It's almost pointless to point out all the different genre blends on this thing and all the things she's hopping to from song to song because there's so much covered. It really is this quirky roller coaster of a ride that also has a lot of pop appeal. The song There She Smiles is an absolute obsession of mine. I mean, just hook me up to an IV of that track, seriously. It's got like the weirdest chord progression, but it's also like this very bubblegum, late 60s kind of style pop. My favorite album of the year 2019, the year 2019, uh, was an album called Distress Signals by Earthquake Lights, kind of an obscure New York band, and that was their first album. Now we're on to their third. It's called something. Uh, what is it called? Something Peace? No. 
Earth? Hmm. Signs of life. Not even close. Maybe This band, Earthquake Lights, excited me so much because it was probably the closest thing to the Reina Kindo that I've heard, which is easily a top five band of all time for me. And like Kindo, this band has a very sophisticated, a very sincere, a very soulful jazz rock sound. Maybe not as like Latin and prog inspired as Kindo, but very clean and like I said, very sophisticated, it's classy. Piano led and you got this thumping P bass sound and orchestral arrangements and dry crisp drums. And this album, Signs of Life, follows suit with a lot of slow tempos, very warm analog sounds. And for as dense as the arrangements can be with those strings, you know, the orchestra added on top of the rock uh, trio, it feels very sparse. The slow tempos probably play into that, but the overall mood is very contemplative, very almost austere. I think my favorite track is A Dead Wind, which kind of has Johnny Greenwood style orchestral arrangements, you know, very cinematic. But ugh, overall, this record was a little bit disappointing, uh, like their second one. You know, I feel like that debut had a lot more variation, it was catchier. I miss some of the, the fun and funkier aspects of that album too. This one just feels a little too clean, too sterilized. You know, I've listened to it a handful of times now and it's just not sticking with me. But still, if you like a sound like Rain Akindo, you know, very analog, very uh, clean and acoustic instrumentation that sounds like it was made by real humans, then uh, yeah, check out Earthquake Lights. From something very soft and clean to something a lot more jagged, a lot more vicious, I've got some prog metal here for you with Thrail Kills Unperson. With a name like Wes Thrail Kill, you really have no choice but to shred. Wes used to make music under the name Mammoth, which is how I originally heard him back in 2015, way back in the glory days. Uh, there was an EP called Innate, and I loved it. That thing absolutely rips. Blending his uniquely melodic but highly technical guitar approach in this instrumental sound that kind of touched on jazz fusion as well. And I kind of fell off the wagon for a little bit. You know, I think I listened to his second album, maybe his third, Deviations. Uh, there was some other one in there. There's been maybe a couple since. And I kind of forgot about him, not because I didn't like the new music, but you know, there's just so much music out there. And then he emailed me. An unperson carries forth all the technical virtuosity of the greatest Instagram guitar players, but with the melody and composition to back it up, which let's face it, that's kind of the only thing that matters. If you like some guitar antics, if you like instrumental music, if you like prog metal, go check it out. To one of my favorite album covers of the year, and just look at this thing. It's the New York psych pop band Crumb with their album A Mama. This is a band I've had my peripheral vision on for years, but I finally locked into this album because this thing is really up my alley. Electronic experimentation like Caribou, but also a very strong psych pop kind of sound, like I said, like Melody's Echo Chamber or a lesser known favorite, Mamalarkey. The first half of this album is particularly strong. It's a super just well-produced set of tracks. I love the break beats on Side by Side and a big fan of Bug, which slinks along with this eerie synth progression and this very sticky line of the bug is always on my mind. With the last verse talking about being bit in the nighttime, which really adds to that sense of unsettling eeriness that the music evokes. I love that quality of a lot of psychedelic pop stuff. You know, it's very creepy, it can be very twisted, but it's also so listenable and re-listenable with just how smooth these textures are. And ultimately it's pop, so it's meant to be ear candy. This is that very dreamy slacker kind of indie bedroom stuff in its aesthetic, but it's very careful and very meticulous in its execution. 
It took me a few listens on this one, but it's really hidden. And what would all this 60s psychedelic music be without some English artists in the mix? And there's been this resurgence of this weirdo indie prog stuff in the UK, which is where this band's from. The album is Twice Round the Sun, the band is Ugly, and then UK in parentheses, which I think says everything you need to know about the kind of Gen Z irony going on here. Complex vocal harmonies and arrangements are at the center of this band's sound, which you'll hear right away on the opening track, The Wheel. I think of the 60s band Free Design with all these male-female vocal stacks and all these interweaving harmonies. Gentle Giant also comes to mind with all these absurd vocals, all the starts and stops and crazy bass lines. Icy Windy Sky is another huge highlight that just builds tension in its second half into this flurry of anxiety and euphoria in equal measure. I actually heard this one from Anthony Fantano, which, you know, gotta thank the man. I don't hear a lot of stuff from him that I really love. I feel like our tastes don't overlap too much, but, you know, Thank you, Melon. He made connections to Richard Dawson, to Grizzly Bear, which definitely spot on. You know, there's a folk element to this progressive sound. This is pretty dense work for an EP, but definitely looking forward to what's next for the band, you know, in the wake and of this news of Black Midi, at least uh, temporarily splitting up. It's nice to have some cutting edge prog artists in the UK. While I listen to some jazz, I wouldn't call myself a jazz head. You know, I don't really venture outside the classics and just a handful of new releases every year. Uh, but this band is in that territory for me where I'm always coming back. And that band is Bad Bad Not Good, one of my favorite modern jazz artists and one that really bridges the gap nicely between my sort of alternative pop and rock leanings uh, and jazz. And they released a, a trio of EPs in the last few months. It's called Mid Spiral. I've really got into the first and second one. I think it's Chaos and Order. Bad Bad Not Good's always done these cross-genre collaborations and crossovers. Their career started doing hip-hop covers. And this one's a more traditional jazz set. It's definitely uh, some of the more easy listening stuff they've done. And there's a bit of irony in this EP that's called Chaos. Uh, it's pretty orderly, but still it's this EP, Chaos, that's my favorite of any, anything I've heard from this so far. Uh, it's delivered one of my favorite tracks of the year so far in Your Soul and Mine. A very vibey, jammy track with a great horn hook and B section, a psychedelic guitar based Latin hand drum solo section. All these EPs are a little bit of a mixed bag, you know, it's a little bit like compositionally off the cuff and it doesn't feel all that ambitious despite having you know, this much music packed in here, but there still are a lot of great moments. But I love the blend of global sounds. I love the emphasis on guitar, especially on that EP Chaos. And I still look back on their album three as one of my favorite modern jazz albums and really just one I go back to all the time. It's kind of a palate cleanser for me. And there you go. That's seven new albums for you. I've got a lot more to talk about, but wanted to save it for another video. Um, so I'll try to get to that a little bit sooner next month. Hear me out. The pressure to content. Oh, there's so much variety in those seven albums. Like I have set you up for at least one or two of those that you're really going to love. So just go out, check them out. Let me know what I've missed from the past month or two. I know I can think straight off the top of my head of a couple albums that I'm really loving that I just want to save for another video. So we'll do that. And in the meantime, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please help me out with that. Like the video, leave a comment below because comments apparently are like super important for the algorithm now. Uh, they were before, but now they're like everything. And as always, thank you so much for watching. What's I gonna do?